Hey, this is Mad Hatter here, and I'm going to show you a new pack that I have. Well, an update to an old pack, but it's still a new set of packs and how to use them. This one is a rehash of my Skyblock packs. If you haven't played them, there is a 1.18 compatible version, but this one is the new 1.19 where it cleans up this ancient cities. I'm adding a couple of other packs and you're going to need to watch near the end of the video or at least to the end of the video to see how to set this up properly. If you don't set it up properly, you will end up in a death loop. So please pay attention and watch the video. Otherwise, there will be complaints about, oh my God, it didn't work for me because I didn't watch the video and I didn't pay attention. So do try to actually pay attention to the video because it is a little bit different than setting up other packs. These ancient cities do have a lot of blocks in them. There was a poll on my YouTube channel for that. If you uh, voted in it and you voted for the larger or most of the cities sticking around, that's what won. And the reason that we, we need to have something is because these sensors need to generate. And if I take away all the skulk, then these don't generate. If these don't generate, they don't make wardens. If they don't make wardens, well, you can't fight a warden then. I, I kind of want you to be able to fight all of the boss mobs if you're that crazy. I mean, fighting the wither in this would be just silly nuts. There is some differences between the vanilla seed and this mainly around the geodes. Uh, and some of the stuff in the mine shafts, but m but most of this world is as it would generate just without the blocks. So let's talk about the modes that I am going to enable. There's going to be five packs that you can mix and match. There is a this pack, or the, this base pack, which generates the world. It does not generate this island. It just generates a world exactly as you'd see it if you went away from that that skyblock island. The next pack generates the world with everything deleted except for I had trouble getting rid of the planks on the bottom of the mine shaft. They get hard code generated, so I can't really pull those out. And also the ruined portals. For some reason, those are hard code generated in a way that I can't figure out how to remove them. So they're just in for now. Now, there are three ways that I support generating these islands. The first way is you get at one island at world spawn, sort of the classic skyblock method. So if you're playing on a multiplayer server, you all spawn on this island and it can be really boring because there's only one tree to punch and there's only one cobble generator to run. So not exactly a great multiplayer game. The second mode is each person who comes in randomly gets assigned a new island. So if you if you get assigned an island here, your buddy might be all the way across the world, but you're still in the same world. You can meet up and you can play multiplayer. And now the third and honestly, this is my favorite version, and it's the one that I'd recommend if you're playing on a server is when you die, you spawn a new island. So this works because uh, this works well for servers, because a lot of people when they're new to Skyblock make mistakes. For instance, the most common one is to place your cobblestone generator in such a way that in such a way that this is the most common way you lose a sky block is you turn your lava into obsidian this has happened to all of us if you play sky block you know that this is painful if i jump off into the void now i'm gonna get a new island it won't be in the same spot so this new island is generating in a new spot and it is randomly assigned on a block between minus 3000 and plus 3000. And I have new terrain to explore, but most importantly, I have a new cobble generator for me to, to mess up. So if I were to make another mistake, and if I were to make another mistake in Obsidian again, I can jump and I can get a new world until, oh, there was a notion monument there until I get to either where I want to be or until I stop screwing up my, my cobble generator because you know it's happened once or twice. <laughs> Everyone screwed up their cobble generator once or twice. Anyway, now you have those three options, but not all blocks are obtainable. So I have made another pack that lives on top of these that d modifies a couple of loot tables and gives you the ability to craft a lot of blocks. So the way that this works is the right now, the loot tables on this world, if I didn't put that crafting pack, are pure vanilla. But if I wanted to add in, let's say, 
the ability to find bamboo in the mine shafts as well as mycelium, or if I wanted to add in the ability to uh, find the moss blocks in the in the same mine shafts, that is all in this uh, extra pack, as well as ability to craft sand and the ability to craft D slate and the ability to craft all of the ores. So let's get into setting up one. So here we are on my website. There's a link in the description or there should be a URL on screen. Now, what you need to do is choose the packs that you want. You can choose from the Sky, uh, the Hatter Skyblock with structures or Hatter Skyblock void. And again, this void may be broken. If I update it in the future, I'll put out a post on that. There is the starter island generation, which you have three options there. There is the Skyblock per life, there's Skyblock per player, and there's Skyblock classic. And then there are crafting and loot tables. This is the one that I am offering. This makes everything in the game that I think should be craftable, craftable. Um, and I don't think there's a lot that this misses. Then in addition, there are articles to uh, that are linked to from bedrock.dev. If I click here, it'll tell you how to make a crafting recipe of your own if you want to. This is a wonderful uh, community. I would recommend joining if you are at all interested in making packs. So let's get into Minecraft and show you how to install these in a world. So now we're going to create a new world and then it is really important that you do this next step. You have to turn on custom biomes. You have to have that on. If you don't have that on, these packs will not work. Next, you choose your uh, flavor of world generation. So down here, I have both of them. I'm going to turn on generate with structures. Next, if you want the, you're going to want to choose your type of island. I like the per life island, especially if I'm on a server. I want to be per life. That way, if somebody else makes obsidian, we don't have to restart the world. But other people don't like that. So if you're playing a single player world, I would just turn on classic at uh, world spawn and then you're going to have to delete the world if you screw up, but that's on you. Now, the last thing you can choose your crafting mix. If there's somebody else who has a better crafting mix pack than me, choose their pack. Uh, that doesn't hurt my feelings at all. And then you should have three packs for mine. I have the you can see in this icon. It's the crafting and loot, the spawn rules and the world generation. It doesn't matter which order they're in because these three packs are designed to work together. If you need, if you want to move them around, you can, um, but they do not collide in any way that that order is important. Now, if I hit create, I am now on an island. Sometimes you take a little bit of damage and occasionally you uh, things lag while you're building and you might auto die. But here you can see I am on a world and it's starting to generate. There's the monster spawners, some weirdness there. Oh, there's another monster spawner. And yes, this is a lot. This is a lot more resource intense than a normal Minecraft world. So you do have some weird things that might take longer to load. Recommend not playing on huge sim distances, but it's just the world loading after the world is fully loaded. It generates just fine. All right, just it works just fine. So here I don't have a lot of interesting structures because I have uh, the random random start. I could just jump off and I would uh, respawn on a new island, which I accidentally did there. And now when I get my new island, it should be in a different spot. Let's take a look at the crafting recipes. So now I have creative mode so I can give myself stuff. We're going to go into survival. I'm going to give myself and I'm going to give myself 64 of that. I'm going to give myself blackstone because uh, you can get blackstone from bartering, which is fine. And now you can see I can craft cobbled deep slate, which is the new recipe I add, one of the new recipes I've added. I'm gonna give myself, I'm gonna give myself iron 
ingots, which you can get from an iron farm. And now you could see deep slate iron if I had enough iron. So now you can see I could craft deep slate iron. And if I smelt and I get stone, I can create, I can craft iron ore. So like I could craft iron ore here and then I can fortune that and get, uh, get myself raw iron and be able to manipulate things with raw iron. And if I give myself copper, so copper is a little bit different because the loot tables for copper are so incredibly uh, overpowered. You can actually get more than three copper per per, um, per fortune on average. So we make a copper block and now we can get copper ore and copper deep slate ore. So for that, you can craft all of the ores now. So you can craft copper, you can craft gold ore, you can craft whatever you want, and you can get all of those. And it is slightly resource negative, meaning if you do it a whole bunch, you're not gonna on average gain copper or gain gold, uh, but you can craft all of these ores here. Some of them take lapis, some quartz. All right, sorry, instead of the nether brick, So I changed the so I changed the barter table so that the piglins no longer give you nether brick. They instead give you nether rack. I think this is better. I think that nether rack is far more useful than nether brick, but uh, then it's a renewable way to get both nether brick and nether rack because all you have to do is smelt the nether rack into nether bricks and then you're back to where you were so it feels like a really light change I'm a, i almost think that you should get nether rack as a barter table item anyway but that's beside the point now if i go into this crafting table you can craft nether quartz and nether gold both of these are resource negative so that is that is how we get nether Quartz and nether gold, and the quartz you can get from bartering at the same time. I'm going to give myself some quartz. I made calcite renewable because you can craft diorite. And then you can craft diorite into polished diorite, and you can polish diorite into calcite. It's kind of a simple way to get that in, but I think it works. Calcite's not an OP block, it's just another block that you might want for decorating. And then sand. So sand is now craftable. Uh, you, you take four gravel and you get two sand. The idea behind this is that you are taking all of the stones out of the gravel to cause it to become sand. It's not really accurate to the real world, but I like the idea that you can get sand in a reliable method that is under the user control rather than just having to wait for a wandering trader and only getting one stack of sand. I really hope that Mojang adds a way to get sand generally. I don't care what it is, but I want a farmable way to get sand in the world. So for now, this works for me. It's not the best, it's not the worst, but you can now get all of those items as well. The other one that I added was the ability to craft dead bushes because I figured out how to, uh, to remove them from the world spawn. So now you can craft a dead bush with a bunch of sticks. Um, that is what I really, that's what I added. So if you think that those are fair, play with them. If you don't, don't play with them. And if you want to make your own, I put links on how to do that in the post on my website. And if you want to do any of this or get any of this, the link for the website is in the description, specifically a link to the Skyblock page, which contains everything I talked about. Anyway, I enjoy this version of Skyblock. I hope you do too. And if you do, leave a like. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe because I try to keep uh, doing interesting things in Minecraft. And this one I think is different than what other people have done. So anyway, this is Matt Hatter and I'm out. Bye.